Ah, yes, dark academia, the literary genre turned Tumblr aesthetic turned TikTok craze. To be honest, I was a little surprised when I started seeing dark academia pop up in my Pinterest feed and then on YouTube. Here was a conglomeration of so many things I already loved and didn't know that they had a name. This is actually way too small for my head. I guess I just have a big noggin. The aesthetic intrigued me, and recently Charles and I were watching the Robert Downey Jr. versions of Sherlock Holmes and the overall Victorian mystery dark academia vibe of those two movies got me thinking, I want more of this in my house. Now generally I try to decorate with a lighter color palette because it can feel like a cave in here. So I thought the best way to go about this would be to confine it to one little space. And what better space to do that in than my personal little desk corner nook where I do most of my sewing and try to do most of my video editing rather than slouching on the couch like a potato. So that is where I'm going to be focusing my efforts. So let's get started. Okay, so here is the before and of course the first step in any good decorating project is to take everything out and clean. Once I had everything removed from the nook, I took the opportunity to thoroughly clean the window as well as polish the floor and my desk. I've had this same desk since high school and I still love it. Thankfully, its style is already well suited to the dark academia aesthetic. The most obvious change I needed to make to this corner was the curtain. This cutesy print just wouldn't do. I used this old piece of a burgundy bedsheet to create a new curtain. It's been in my fabric stash for probably like 10 years, so I'm glad it finally got its moment to shine. It was a little bit short, however, so after cutting my piece to the correct width, I used the remaining fabric to make a ruffled segment for the bottom. The ruffle had to be made with three separate segments as well, because again, I was a little short on fabric. Once all the pieces were cut, I set about hemming the edges. Thankfully, the top part of the bedsheet was actually already hemmed in a way that created a pocket for a curtain rod, so I just had to hem the outside edges. I also sewed a straight stitch dividing this pocket in two so that the bottom half would be for the curtain rod and the top half would create a ruffle. So the two pieces of the new curtain are made, um, but I haven't put them together yet because I want to paint on the pattern first before assembling them, but I'm not going to do that tonight. Instead, actually, I'm going to hang up this, which I got at the thrift store a couple weeks ago. Um, this is just a replacement for the little cork triangles that I had up originally that I kind of hate. So this was an awesome thing to find. So at least I can say I accomplished putting that up today. But first I decided to paint all of the little buttons on it gold, which is about as tedious as it sounds, but it looked so much better. Details are everything, guys. I also decided last minute to paint the command hook gold as well. Probably should have done a coat of acrylic gesso first, but whatever. To create the pattern for the curtain, I found a damask, damask, damask. I don't know, design that I liked on Pinterest and used a tracing trick from grade school to make my stencil. First, you print the design out and cover the back of the paper with graphite. Then you place the graphite side down onto your new surface and trace the outline of the design, pressing firmly and making sure the paper doesn't move. Once the design was traced, I cut it out using an X-Acto knife. It took freaking forever and it hurt my fingers, in case you were wondering, which you probably weren't, but now you know. Also, this is just a Nilla wafers box I pulled out of our recycling. You really don't need anything fancy to make a basic stencil. Please focus on my face. It's painting time. This took a very long time to cut out of the cardboard and it will probably take a very long time to paint onto the fabric. Um, so I'm gonna pop in a movie and get started on this. Little did I know that it would end up taking me 10 whole minutes to paint just one of these doohickeys, which meant painting on the floor was not a viable option. 
gosh, I just look so uncomfortable. I did eventually get into more of a groove with painting and it took maybe more like six minutes per thingamajiggy, but still, this was all I had accomplished after almost four hours of painting that first day. I also ended up having to make a second stencil halfway through painting because the first one accumulated too much paint around the edges. Hi, please be in focus. Yeah, so I've been painting all gosh darn weekend. I started on Wednesday afternoon. It is now Monday and I still have like a good quarter of the main panel of the curtain to finish. So I haven't really been able to get much else done on my little nook in that meantime, but I did want to show you something that I'm adding to the corner to clean up my pile of extra fabric and things to be altered because the laundry basket I was using just, uh, it was just looking too messy. It worked for a while, but that was when I was very hopeful and thought I would like go through that pile much faster. So let me show you what I got really quickly. So initially I bought this little trunk, which is very, very cute. Um, needs a little, TLC, but I thought it was charming. Um, I like the color and I think the wicker basket aspect is really cool. Um, but it actually is very small. And when I went to the thrift store this past weekend, I ended up actually, well, I ended up actually finding this bad boy. That's a really awkward way to talk about furniture. I should not do that. Um, why is it so dark? Okay, hold on. Ugh, light. So I ended up finding this trunk when I went to the thrift store this past weekend, and it is much bigger than I wanted, honestly, because it really blocks off this little entryway into the nook, but it works as an end table, which is what I wanted, and it's a lot more space for a lot more fabric. So yeah, that's, that's that. <laughs> oh, now back to painting. I'm so close, uh. At long last, the painting was done. I made a ruffle out of the bottom segment of the curtain by sewing two parallel straight stitches along the top edge, both on the longest stitch setting, which I then pulled from either end to create the ruffle. I also added some black satin ribbon, which I got at the dollar store, as trim along the top and bottom of the main panel. Then I attached the ruffle and went to hang my curtain, but got an unpleasant surprise. <laughs> My curtain's really short. <laughs> so much disappointment. I tried moving the command hooks down, but ultimately the curtain was too short no matter what I did. I briefly considered taking the curtain apart and rehemming it, but I knew that this would, at most, only give me another half inch, and that really wasn't worth going through all of that work again. By placing the tension rod inside the window frame, I managed to position it so that only a small portion of the window wasn't covered. I figured I could disguise this a little by draping something across the top of the window. I went with this sheer maroon panel I picked up at the thrift store, but since it was a bit too short to frame the whole window, I cut it in half lengthwise and then sewed the two pieces together along their short end to create a much longer panel. I would have liked to show you more of this step, but it was at exactly this point that my phone decided to restart itself for no apparent reason. To hang the panel, I used more of the same black satin ribbon tied in a bow to sort of hide the small command hooks. I also found this nice piece of cording to use for tying back the curtain. With the curtain finished, I could finally move on to the other wall. I knew that I wanted to create a mini gallery wall, so I used this trick I saw on Pinterest to decide the layout. I traced my items onto regular paper and then tried different arrangements with the paper before settling on this layout. I actually briefly thought about hanging my college diploma here, but I'm pretty set on not hanging it until my student loans are paid off and it belongs to me and not the government. I chose this painted wooden fan, a small embroidery, a dali print, a small postcard, and decided I would make my own tiny painting for the wall as well. I used the small canvas from the dollar store. I'm a huge fan of Andrew Wyeth's paintings and just the overall feeling they evoke, but this framed print is a little too heavy to hang with just command hooks, so I decided to try making my own solemn landscape painting. The colors turned out brighter than I anticipated, but it's alright, I think it still fits well with the other items. My next victim was this chair. Originally, I didn't think I'd do anything to it, but I ended up finding the perfect fabric at the thrift store to reupholster it, and like I said, details matter. I probably paid way too much for this fabric, but it's surprisingly difficult to find good fabric at my nearest thrift store, probably because I'm always competing with our local Amish population to get to it first. 
I was pleasantly surprised to find out the fabric on this chair was actually a removable cover, which meant cloning it with the new fabric was slightly easier. I decided to actually sew the new cover rather than just hot gluing the new fabric to the chair cushion because I figured it would look a little nicer and be easier to remove in the future if I ever wanted to. Alas, my chair cover cloning skills are not that good and it didn't quite fit right. I really didn't want to take all the time to redo it, so I ended up using hot glue after all, but only in a few spots where I had trouble getting it to stay put, like in the back corners. It definitely still looks better than if I had just used hot glue. I then rearranged the inside of the desk to look a little neater and included some items featuring maps before selecting items to adorn the top of the desk. There were a lot of strong contenders, including this award I got in college that's basically a, um... It's my clock. Some of the items I chose were this very shiny rock, this book that I turned into a little storage box, this mini book about Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven that belonged to my grandfather, and this whiskey bottle that was a gift from my mother-in-law last year. Well, the bottle itself wasn't the gift. It came with whiskey in it, but I have since consumed said whiskey and kept the bottle because it was so stinking cool. I also chose some favorite postcards and old photos, as well as my college tassel, because this is supposed to be an academically inclined theme after all. Overall, I chose to decorate this space more neatly and more organized than many dark academia images that you'll find on Pinterest or Instagram, but that's really just a personal preference. I could have taped random scraps of paper and pictures to the wall or strewn whimsical things about the desk, but I get overwhelmed in a cluttered workspace. Anyway, the last thing I added was this black velvet and satin scarf that I draped over the chair. But let's get to the reveal, shall we? Obsessed. This turned out so cozy and I cannot wait to start tackling all the sewing projects I've been putting off <laughs> in this little corner. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. Every time I walk past this little nook, it just feels like this magical little corner in an otherwise pretty average looking apartment. So I'm just, I'm really happy with it. I think at some point if I find a candlestick that I like, I might add that. I'm not really a big candlestick person in general because I think they're kind of messy. I prefer these little contain cups of candle. <laughs> candle jars, that's the word. I also considered adding some little knickknacks above the window in that arched section, but I didn't want to make it look too cluttered. Um, one thing that I definitely am going to be changing though is this little embroidery. This one was a gift someone made for me some years back, but I actually have an idea for one that I want to make. I just didn't get around to it this week, and I really need to start focusing on Christmas stuff, so if you want to see what I eventually put in this embroidery hoop in the near future, go follow my Instagram. I'm actually really happy with the chair, too. I kind of, like, thought about not doing anything to it, but you know what? Little details make a world of difference. Like even just painting the stupid command hook, that really takes it up a notch, I think. I kind of just I kind of just want to sit here the rest of the day. I could I could keep going on and on, but there's really nothing to say other than I'm very happy about how this turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this whole process. Like, share, subscribe and all that other stuff to feed the algorithm and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Dearest brother, 
It hath been far too long since I last did see ye. Text me back, you turd. What shall we do with the drunkard?